Okay. Um, hello, everyone. So, um, yeah, just to briefly introduce myself, uh, my name is Esther. I am, uh, I've graduated from the Masters of Social Work program at York University uh, just this year. I'm actually convocating tomorrow. Um, and uh, the study, uh, the uh, research study that I'm going to be presenting today is the um, pra practice research paper that I completed within the program. Uh, so the title of my paper is called The Art of Government, a Foucauldian Discourse Analysis of the Canada Emergency Response Benefit Program. Um, yeah, so just uh, the agenda for today, I'll just go over some of the um, things that set up the research, um, and then I'll go over the arguments, um, and then talk about the findings and then reflections in future directions. Um, so an overview of the study. Uh, so, you know, just to share a bit about what actually got me interested in doing this research. Um, so during COVID, uh, something that I noticed a lot was that there seems to be a disproportionate um, uh, income supports that were provided um, to middle income and slash upper class versus low income um, people and families. And this is something that I discovered in my work in the financial empowerment program during my placements um, at Wood Green. And uh, I found that this research would be significant for social work um, because it would help us to, um, it would bring insight on ways that populations may become marginalized uh, and the political processes that would actually make this possible. And it also looks at the dominant discourses and priorities that guide government decision-making. Um, and and you know this research could also contribute uh, in the social work field by advocating for equitable income policy and understanding the present political structures and um, how to resist neoliberalism as well. Uh, so situating the research within the literature. Uh, so this research study follows decades of policy studies that identifies how neoliberalism motivates government decisions and how social policies are made to achieve neoliberal goals. So, uh, you know, historically for our decades since the 1990s, Canada's welfare system has continually gone through retrenchment and funding towards programs such as EI, healthcare and social services have continually become more, uh, more and more reduced um, due to the belief that people should fulfill their needs through the market and that the government needs to reduce spending. So the research um, that in the study on the CRB is informed by these trends that have been occurring over the past few decades, and it'll aim to identify to what extent the government is continuing these trends through the CRB program. And the research questions that um, I aim to answer is what are the dominant discourses underlying Canada's CRB program? What do the identified discourses reveal about Canada's priorities when it came to creating COVID-19 social assistance programs? And who do these policies intend to protect? And I'll be making three major arguments, which um, is that the government uses third way politics to give an illusion of support to all Canadians during a pandemic when they are prioritizing workers only. The government believes that the economy is a real victim of the pandemic and the CRB is intended to save the economy and the government uses neoliberal measures of success in order to enhance nation building. Um, so the methodology that I used uh, was a Foucauldian discourse analysis. So um, Foucauldian discourse analysis, uh, this, um, it asks how a discourse becomes a truth and what this truth accomplishes rather than whether a statement is uh, actually true. And through this method, um, I'll, it'll be able to uh, pay more attention to how discourses operate to produce a coded national narrative. Um, which is a version of truth that becomes widely accepted nationally. And um, through this FDA method, the study will explore not just what is said in relation to the CRB, but also how the, but also the mechanisms that actually control what is said, who is included and excluded, and how this upholds a national narrative. And the theoretical framework. So, uh, it follows the theory of governmentality slash the art of government. Um, so this idea um, presents is that the art of government um, or governing requires craft, imagination, tacit skills, and intuition. Um, so governmentality is a demonstration of the art of government, 
um, which demonstrates, which describes the ways that the governments use organized practices and policies to not only control subjects, but to create a system in which subjects govern themselves. Governmentality provides a theoretical uh, framework to question how people are shaped into self-governing subjects to fit into behaviors of an ideal citizen and how certain behaviors or groups of people become problematized. And I also use Brown's theory of neoliberalism as a political rationality. Um, and this theory uh, it believes that the government constricts human and institu institutional behavior into following the market rationalities and normalizes employing economic principles of analyzing profitability and assessing costs and benefits as a rational action. And um, neoliberal as a political rationality, it also legitimizes and maintains neoliberalism by developing discourses, practices, and policies that produce rational actors um, and establish the economic rationales in all spheres of society. And the research design of the study. So um, I set out to, uh, I, I gathered government resources. Um, so this could include the, um, a lot of it was from enhance our debates, but also the different speeches and bills um, and publications between March, 2020 to November, 2020. Uh, and um, yeah, and then in the research design, I followed the, what is the problem represented to be approach. Um, so this approach is, um, is a Foucauldian influenced approach that premises on the idea that problems are produced through policy rather than the general assumption that policies solve a problem that already exists. And uh, yeah. So getting into the three major arguments that I found. So the first argument, um, talking about how the government uses third way politics uh, to give an illusion of support to all Canadians during the pandemic when they are prioritizing workers only. So uh, throughout the data, pol uh, politicians and government representatives were repeatedly um, saying that, identifying that they know that Canadians are in need and they are here to support Canadians. Um, but it brings the question of then who is a Canadian? Who are these in, um, people that they're including, that they're saying they're supporting? Um, for example, there's a quote from um, Prime Minister Trudeau that says, this government has been there for Canadians through this pandemic, and we will continue to be there for Canadians. Um, so by repeating this idea that the government is supporting Canadians, these statements create a kind of a facade that during this pandemic, no Canadian was left behind because the government um, was there to meet the needs of each Canadian. Um, and it's building into a wider discourse of nationalism and pride in how Canada is a leader in addressing the pandemic. Um, and the government was able to accomplish creating this facade of wide support to all Canadians by using a third way politics approach. Uh, so in third way, Approaches, governments try to balance social and economic interests while avoiding debate or responses on economic regulation, inequality, and corporate power. And as a result, ne neoliberal priorities are implemented in order to benefit corporate interests and business conditions while avoiding the need to create redistributive measures that counters the poverty that's actually caused by the free market. So while stating the importance of ensuring that no one is left behind and that it's their priority to support all Canadians um, until the pandemic ends, their, uh, the government's actions demonstrate that support for workers and businesses is actually the most important to ensure the economy can recover. And as a result, the largest and most generous programs such as the CRB were created to support, um, uh, that were created during COVID were directed to support workers and businesses rather, rather than marginalized populations. And the discourses that, the discourse that emerges um, through these policies and debates is that an ideal Canadian citizen is a worker and a contributor to the economy. And by prioritizing workers and businesses through the policy and discourse, government actors are reinforcing the belief that those who work belong in Canada and therefore can share in the resources available to citizens in their time of crisis. Um, so this is how we actually see governmentality um, at work. Through the CRB, the government is conveying to citizens that um, those who work are deserving of financial support, and those who do not work will not be entitled to much support, if any at all, which is definitely what we saw in the pandemic, um, that a lot of marginalized um, 
populations were not getting the support that they needed. And this creates in the subjects, you know, the people, um, the idea that it's better to be a worker and that those who do not work have not earned their rights to benefits in this crisis. And this discourse of identifying Canadians as workers effectively co um, operates to control marginalized citizens to accept that they do not have a right to pandemic supports or um, despite the fact that government should be protecting citizens. Um, so kind of wrapping up this first argument, uh, argument, what we are seeing is that the government uses tech these techniques such as third way um, approaches to reinforce discourses of a supportive government, which benefits uh, in the end, nationalism and nation building. And through the CRB, the government is creating and reinforcing the discourse that Canadians are hard workers who deserve support in this time of crisis. But this leaves out those who may not be working due to many reasons and are in need of support during the pandemic, but they are left behind by the government. And the second argument is that the government believes the economy is a real victim of this pandemic and the CRB is intended to save the economy. Um, so throughout the data, um, there was uh, a key theme that emerged is that there's a repeated emphasis and concern for businesses and, econ and the economy. Um, so this is an interesting pattern because while the CRB was created to support the financial needs of workers and their families so that they can pay for essentials such as uh, housing, food, and their bills, many conversations that were had um, in the House during the debate centered on the impact that the CRB has on businesses and economies rather than the individual well-being. Um, so for example, we saw quotes um, from uh, members of parliament that says uh, these programs are keeping workers connected to employers and the unemployed connected to the labor force supporting our recovery. The economy is benefiting from considerable fiscal support to protect the most vulnerable, replace lost income and subsidize wages. Um, so this discourse shapes how the pandemic is told. Um, and it's kind of telling a story in which businesses and workers were the vi real victims of the pandemic. Um, you know, but then the government encouraged Canadians to work together to rebound economically to build a stronger nation. And this kind of dominant storyline emphasizes the devastating effects the economy faced as a result of COVID, which positions workers and businesses as the vulnerable populations who require and deserve support. Um, and by placing the economy as the victim, the government then is able to legitimize providing large amounts of financial supports to workers and businesses while neglecting many other populations who were in need. Um, and research has demonstrated that populations um, in vulnerable positions before the pandemic, such as those um, you know, possibly facing low, low income or underhoused precarious workers and those who rely um, on community services and connections are the ones who are experiencing more severe impacts from the pandemic. Um, and this practice does follow uh, the neoliberal political rationality um, in which policies are made to support market rationalities and as a result produces rational subjects who police themselves to support market needs. Um, so through the CERB, the government reinforced neoliberal discourse by heavily focusing on recovering the economy rather than sufficiently, sufficiently meeting the needs of all Canadians, whether they are workers or not. Uh, and these policies shape subjects by conveying that help is earned uh, through contributing to the economy and those who don't contribute to the economy are not deserving of the support in a time of crisis. Um, so summarizing the second argument, uh, what the research is showing is that the government's priority is in not only recovering the economy, but also using this as an opportunity to encourage citizens to understand their role and responsibility and helping to build back an even stronger economy. And the government uses neoliberal political rationality to ensure the stability of the market. And the third argument is that the government uses neoliberal measures of success in order to enhance nation building. So uh, a key theme that emerged um, is, uh, that demonstrates this government's neoliberal, uh, neoliberal priorities is uh, the continual use of statistics as a measure of success in the CRB program. The government, um, the government uses these neoliberal uh, rationalities to prove the importance of their policies. And neoliberalism emphasizes market rationalities such as efficiency, investments, and quantitative measures. So, um, you know, when me members of the government were describing and defending their decision to make the CRB, they often emphasize the number of people served um, and the efficient speed of the program. 
Um, so this was seen in quotes such as um, from politicians saying the government was so effective that well over 8 million Canadians benefited from it. Um, the Canada has less than 37 million people, we can do the math. Um, and we were guided by three principles, speed, scale, and simplicity. And I think we delivered on all three. So those are quotes um, from government um, uh, politicians. And what's evident in these members' descriptions is that they believe that success is determined by numbers. Um, using numbers appeals to neoliberal logic and rationality. And through a neoliberal lens, this program would look very successful. Um, the statistics show that many people were supported in an efficient manner. However, what these numbers don't convey is the reality of who is included, um, which as mentioned before, uh, was you know a lot of marginalized poli uh, populations were not included. Um, and by using uh, by choosing to use a neoliberal measure of success, the government is reinforcing neoliberalism by creating the discourse that the CRB was a successful program when it was really only serving the needs of the economy during the crisis. And this also legitimizes the use of economic principles to measure success and reproduces this discourse. Um, and so what these dominant storylines of success do is that it allows the government to engage in nation building, um, which encourages citizens to continue working together to rebuild the economy. Uh, the government attempts to paint a picture that Canada's economy is resilient and strong, and that with the government's leadership, Canada is uh, responding successfully to the pandemic. Uh, where we see this in quotes um, from a government official saying our fiscal discipline in the years leading up to this combined with Canadians hard work and entrepreneurial spirit meant that Canada was resilient and ready to face the challenge. Um, but uh, the Obani in uh, 2007 describes how national narratives are used to form na uh, national subjects. So by stating that Canadians are hardworking and entrepreneurial, the government is painting a national story that subjects citizens to following this attitude and behavior towards work. And as a result, this creates a discourse on what it means to be Canadian, which is to be a hardworking entrepreneurial being. And if you don't align with this description, then you know perhaps you're not included in the description of a Canadian. Uh, and this is a dangerous national narrative as by legitimizing this characteristic as the norm, it entitles those who follow this identity to benefit, such as the CRB, while those who do not follow this identity are not deserving of the supports that they need to survive. So summarizing this last argument, what we see is that the government uses neoliberal measures in order to reinforce a discourse of a successful economy in Canada. And this discourse is then used to paint a national narrative of Canada and therefore um, Canadians as well to be identified by being hardworking and entrepreneurial, which subjugates people to follow this discourse to meet neoliberal priorities. So taking a look at um, the findings. So what this research shows is that neoliberalism is instilled in our society and the discourse of neoliberalism operates to uh, create neoliberal institutions, policies, and subjects. We see how the government uses neoliberal political rationality to reproduce norms and policies that reinforce class, race, and gender hierarchies. And ultimately, what this shows us is that neoliberalism does not create an equitable system and society, and our current government is very much a neoliberal actor that reinforces market priorities through programs such as the CRB. And this is an important social justice issue because we know that neoliberalism disadvantages marginalized populations. And this research has built, built on previous studies to show that even during a global pandemic, response programs such as the CRB continue to advantage the economy rather than the people in need. And this decision will has led to life or death outcomes for those disadvantaged. This research is also highlighting the mechanisms and technologies of, of surveillance and that the government uses that the government uses to create subjects that will yield to economic priorities. So methods such as the third way politics, um, using solely quantitative measures to describe success and creating national narratives have been used by the government to form subjects who believe that the government has their best interests in mind and follows um, subjects who follow the government's narrative of prioritizing the economy. And this finding is important as it allows us to be aware of how we may be subjected to following dominant discourses, which can lead to resistance of these dominant discourses. Um, so going to reflections and future directions. Uh, so identifying a limitation in the study, 
Um, so I do acknowledge that there were other uh, COVID programs, um, like programs that came out during the COVID time, such as the Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy and the Canada Emergency Student uh, Benefit that were closely connected to Canada's economic response as well. So uh, oftentimes the government did speak about the CRB and these other programs together. And this uh, limitation is that this study has only focused on the CRB and therefore doesn't speak on the overall economic response from the government of Canada. Um, and so more insight can be gathered from analyzing these other benefits, um, as well as looking at the larger economic response rather than just the single program. Um, so that kind of takes us to areas for future research. So um, there is space to uh, research alternative policies. So such as uh, whether a universal CRB would have been more equitable, um, and researching as well how other countries responded uh, to the needs during the pandemic. And further research can also be conducted, um, as previously said, on other areas of the pandemic um, economic response, so, such as the other um, emergency programs and also the provincial responses that um, were used that and possibly ex examining how, um, if there is a continued pattern of neoliberal rationality, reproduced in these policies as well. And yeah, just concluding um, this presentation. So through this research, um, definitely uh, for myself, I saw how Foucault's work um, around discourses, governmentality and technologies of surveillance um, are very you know, relevant and applicable um, to our daily lives. And being able to apply this perspective to this specific uh, program, it allows us to see how you know, this, um, Foucault's ideas um, on this is relevant to the different programs that come out um, in all areas of our lives. And this research has also shown that there is an art to government. Um, and in our current political system, this art of governance has been used neg negatively to further subjugate people to follow neoliberal priorities. Um, and, and for me, this knowledge motivates me to really consider how I may have been subjected to these dominant discourses. Um, and hopefully, you know, I, as I've shared with all of you, that you can also um, begin to get uh, thinking of how discourses, neoliberal discourses could be operating um, in all of our lives as well, but also seeing if there are ways for resistance to neoliberal discourses. And yeah, so that is the end of my presentation.